My name is Dr. Paul Ledesma. I am a foot and ankle physician and surgeon and I practice here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I am originally from South Georgia and went to undergraduate school at Georgia Southern University. When I finished my bachelor's in science, I then went into medical school at Barry University School of Graduate Medical Sciences for podiatry. After I finished my medical degree, I then did a three-year surgical residency in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the Harvard-affiliated Cambridge uh, Health Alliance. From there, I have practiced in Massachusetts for approximately five years before deciding to move out to Arizona, uh, which is where I've been practicing for the last 10 years. One of the most common conditions is the inflammation of the plantar fascia. And with plantar fasciitis, there are very successful uh, conservative measures that one can take, uh, which we offer in the office, to treat the problem. The treatments can include anything from injections to one of my favorite uh, treatment options, which is an alternative therapy, uh, either cold laser therapy and or extracorporeal shockwave therapy. Newer technologies that have been around for some time, but really underutilized and in the right hands can be extremely effective with very little side effects and or discomfort. Outside of that, there are other conditions such as nerve pain that can cause heel pain. There are plenty of nerves on the inside of the heel and into the arch that can mimic plantar fasciitis, which is sometimes missed and altogether untreated and can be an integral part of making someone feel better that comes in with heel pain. And for those kinds of conditions, the, the same types of therapies, the shockwave or cold laser, alternative type of injections such as regenerative medicine, platelet-rich plasma is a great option, or even amniotic-derived growth factors. Outside of nerve pain and plantar fasciitis, you could have also bone spur problems or even tendinopathies or tendinitis, which is also located in the arch close to the plantar fascia. And for those conditions, outside of the other treatments of already mentioned, one of the integral uh, recommendations I typically resort to is physical therapy. And once therapy and all the other conservative measures have failed, there are select surgical procedures such as the ultrasonic debridement procedure by 10x, which is an amazing procedure that can be done under very little sedation and receive almost immediate results right after the procedure with very little downtime. I'm just so grateful for Dr. Paul Ledesma because he has taken such great care of my family, my friends, my colleagues, and all the patients that I've ever referred to him. I would definitely recommend him. He has a great bedside manner, he's very professional, very educated, and has compassion for his patient. Peripheral neuropathy has been a major part of foot and ankle treatment and care. A lot of my diabetic patients, and, and there are some that aren't diabetic, can suffer from what they call peripheral neuropathy. It's a very painful condition in many cases. The pain can be resistant in some cases to medications, which has really been the foundation of treatment for neuropathy outside of the other services that I offer in my clinic. Because diabetes is a big part of my foot and ankle practice, we do tend to see quite a bit of patients with peripheral neuropathy. Another nerve condition that is a very challenging problem that one can have uh, and can be very difficult to, in some cases to diagnose, but then even more difficult to treat effectively, and that's tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a deformity in which the nerve located on the inside of one's ankle can become inflamed or irritated by either other vascular structures in the ankle around the nerve or even masses that may be growing such as a cyst inside of the ankle next to the nerve and compressing it. And in many cases with tarsal tunnel syndrome, conservative therapies are oftentimes effective but there is a large percentage of people where they never get relief. One of the surgical treatments that has been the mainstay for treating tarsal tunnel syndrome is a tarsal tunnel decompression. And very much like its partner or similar conditions in their wrist called carpal tunnel, the procedure done for tarsal tunnel is very similar in that it releases tissue around the nerve to increase the amount of space that the nerve has to rest. 
This will then decrease the amount of pressure to the nerve, therefore relieving the symptoms. What a lot of people don't know, and many physicians don't either have the training and or knowledge to offer, is that tarsal tunnel syndrome traditionally done through a very large open incision, uh, for the most part from the ankle bone down to the bottom of the foot, can actually be done through a two centimeter incision, minimally invasive with endoscopic instrumentation. This was one of the procedures and techniques that I've learned over my training and experience over the last 15 years. The endoscopic tarsal tunnel or minimally invasive tarsal tunnel decompression has been one of the most unique, most satisfying procedures that I've been able to offer my patients with extremely good outcomes and very little recovery time. With traditional open tarsal tunnel decompression, typically patients aren't allowed to walk on the foot for a minimum of two to up to four weeks. With the endoscopic version, I allow them to walk right away, which is a huge benefit for people in reducing the amount of scar tissue that you can form after a decompression nerve procedure, um, which can actually cause more complications than the actual problem itself. Another condition that is a really interesting disorder that I like treating in my office and because it affects such a wide range of people and that's treating a condition more commonly called as a flat foot condition and people experience various types of problems with this foot type. In essence it's a very flexible hypermobile type of foot that allows or forces the body to compensate for the instability which leads to other kinds of problems such as bunion deformities, heel pain, neuromas, tarsal tunnel syndrome. And at the core of the problem is the instability that's within the arch itself. Overpronation is a very common term we use in describing the motion that the foot goes through and how, how it collapses during the instability. I've been performing this procedure since I was trained in residency. Uh, so over 15 years worth of experience the implant itself is a very small, metallic, often, implant that gets placed between two particular bones in the foot and it can reduce the amount of instability or hypermobility that your foot has and actually help hold up the arch. And the best part about the procedure is it's done minimally invasive with a very small uh, two-inch incision and the implant itself procedure-wise only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Afterwards, there's a very short period of time where the patients are advised not to be weight-bearing or walking, but within the first two weeks, one could be back into a sneaker and walking almost better than they were before the surgery. So in my spare time, um, I have a lovely family of, of four people, so including myself, my two children, uh, my son and daughter, and my beautiful wife. Um, we enjoy spending our time uh, doing a lot of outdoor, outdoor type uh, sports and activities, such as hiking, uh, we've done some really neat obstacle courses in the past, um, we like to go on the water, fishing, and outside of that, playing golf is, is a kind of fun personal time and something that my whole family has actually started to enjoy, which is martial arts. Um, one of the unique things that um, I've always wanted and had a passion for was martial arts, but never really experienced outside of through the, the eyes of my children who over the years have gone into several types of disciplines in the past and including my wife. You know, we love Arizona. We've been here over 10 years now, and after being in New England for almost a decade, uh, we decided we had enough of the cold. So we decided to move to a little warmer weather and enjoy the sunshine with, with everyone else here. And we look forward to watching our kids grow up here and being here for as long as we can imagine.